So the folks over at Hisense wanted a brutally honest review on the Hisense UHE, and they ended up sending one over to me. Don't worry, no money changed hands, and I'm not for sale. So don't worry about me just saying something positive for the sake of being positive. We're going to give you an in-depth review, and essentially, buy it. It's one of the best TVs in 2021. Smack a like on this video for getting to the point, because we did that in under 30 seconds. Now we're going to dive a little bit deeper and talk about why. In English, it has beautiful brightness, wonderful color, deep, excellent, dark, inky black levels. It's luxurious from corner to corner, bezel to bezel, and it is one of the best values you are going to find from not only a feature-rich perspective, but also from an aesthetic-rich perspective. When we look at the hands-free voice control with the kill switch at the bottom, that's a feature that only the $3,000 Sony A90J is offering from one of the big three. No other manufacturer has that feature. That is a huge benefit to you. Another thing is that corner to corner, bezel to bezel, you've got chrome accents on the bezel. You've got the chrome Hisense insignia at the bottom. That's a bygone luxury that none of the other brands do anymore. That again is just adding to the premium nature of the TV you are buying. They've got an anti-glare screen that is semi-gloss, so it, it diffuses those reflections that can be a problem in brighter rooms. So again, you don't have to worry about it being a mirror because it most certainly is not. Motion is smooth. It's not the smoothest thing I've ever seen in the smooth preset, but Hisense has said that they are going to work on that. Though if you use the clear preset, it does get a lot smoother. Now we talk about the gaming aspect. Unlike Sony, they're not issuing IOUs. It's not like a, hey, buy us now and we promise we'll update it later. Everything comes as advertised. VRR is there day one with nothing else to worry about as far as updates or patches to get the feature that you're owed. It's that little level of, of attention to detail that is going to make this one of the better options. Now, again, when you talk about black levels, they're surprisingly good. 360 zones of full array local dimming, and they're done right. I mean, when I looked at a star, uh, star field, it just really did everything I was looking for. There wasn't any kind of blooming or clouding in between the stars, and everything was illuminated really well, and I had just as much detail in the stars as I did on OLED, albeit gray or blacks because it's not an OLED. It still was really impressive, and there are moments where this TV can absolutely confuse you, and you might mistake it for an OLED, especially in the brighter scenes in movies. It's just simply exceptional. And then we talk about the performance and game mode. Input lag is exceptionally good. It does an excellent job of making sure that you can get in there and get the job done. And again, they're not overcharging to give you a responsive TV. They're not overcharging to give you these luxuries. And in English, without all the technical mumbo jumbo, regardless of whether you're a pro or not, you're able to make the adjustments you need. They make everything very easy to understand. It's laid out very clearly in the Android operating system, which is snappy, and I didn't have any problems with lagging or glitching or freezing. And as far as some of the things that I've read about online as just kind of looking around about the Hisense UHG and other TVs, there is no red ghosting. That's just not a thing on this particular TV. Now, I've seen some people say that they would like me to watch the TV show The Crown, a very specific TV show and a very specific scene in that TV show to replicate the issue. I will say this. I've spent over five days of like consecutive testing, brutal torture testing to try to replicate this issue. I haven't found it with a single content piece I've put on this thing, everything from Guardians of the Galaxy to Death Note, okay? And I'm telling you right now, there has been no issues with the red ghosting issue. So I think if you're seeing it specifically in the crown, then the problem is that specific TV show because I don't have a problem on my end with any other content piece. And honestly speaking, I haven't tried it with the crown because at that point, I just didn't see a point. So food for thought there. That being said, when I look at everything else that this TV is doing, it's just knocking it out of the park. Again, you have a backlit remote, a flat remote so you can stand it up instead of taking up all the real estate on your nightstand or something like that. And again, these are features reserved typically for premium high-end $3,000 plus televisions like you see on the Sony A90J this year. And it's is being brought to you for $1,299. I think it's an excellent value. And again, that's not even the starting price. That's just this particular variant of the 65-inch. You can go down to the 55-inch and pay $999. And again, 
Getting this TV for that kind of money is an exceptional value. The over 1500 nits of peak brightness alone will really shock you in some scenes. Honestly, coming from my OLED Sony A8G, I had to kind of step down the brightness because it was a bit much for me because I'm so used to every day using an OLED that something this bright was just really crazy. Hisense is actually over delivering on their 1500 nit brightness. So if you were worried that they were maybe under delivering or they're only hitting that number sometimes, all around consecutively, this is an extremely bright TV that can easily hit over 1100 nits on average. So yeah, seriously, don't worry about the brightness of the Hisense UHG. In English and in a nutshell, and without wasting any time of yours, because time is money, right? Honestly, just run out and buy it. Don't waste your time looking around, dude, because Sony only has, what, like 20 zones, 40 zones of full array local dimming? They don't have a lot. That's why they never tell you how many they have. Their peak brightness is lackluster, and honestly speaking, their black levels are abysmal because they have weak local dimming zones. The picture might be nice and the color might be good, but it's not going to compete with the quantum dots found on this ULED television, along with the brightness. I mean, the color volume is allowing you to see more shades of color than what's possible on other TVs. Even the Samsung QN90A and QN85A, the mini LED televisions, are performing poorer than this television. The Hisense outpaces it in color, it outpaces it in motion, and it outpaces them in black levels. When I reviewed the Hisense U8G, as I'm doing, it had excellent black levels, but reviewing the Samsung was the total reverse. I noticed blooming, I noticed a lack of quality control, and I showed that off in a side-by-side -side comparison just to prove how far Hisense has come in just a year. The black level tightening is incredible, and they covered every complaint that I could have possibly had on the Hisense H9G. I hope going forward they can continue this stride to move their quality forward while not moving backwards. One of the things that is a massive area of opportunity for them is to improve that motion in the smooth preset. If they can button up their motion and get it as fluid as it was last year in that particular preset, then that's really one of the only gripes that I would have. But again, they said that they're working on that and it's going to be coming out in the future updates. So by the time you review this, it might not even be a thing. All in all, it's an exceptional TV, and I really, at the risk of sounding like a complete and total shill, will just tell you to get it because they've really done more than every other manufacturer has done this year. Out of everything I've compared and everything I have seen, Hisense is hitting the strongest at the LED level, the QLED level. Nobody is doing it as good as they're doing it this year. Out of everything I've seen so far, as of May 26, 2021, there isn't a single person, brand, or anything that can remotely be considered a competitor in this particular space. Now, again, when you're talking about OLED, things shift, but even going up against the Sony A80J, guys, this thing held its own and didn't back down one bit. I can't tell you how impressive that is considering the price point difference. So hopefully so showing all this off and telling you everything and laying it out there will really help you know that this is one of the best, if not the best, full array local dimming television you're going to find in 2021. Thanks so much for watching the number one brand in honesty. Ask your questions below and I'll do what I can to help you out to find the right product for you and your needs and your family so you're not wasting your television money and, you know, being disappointed. But that being said, again, thanks for watching and until the next video, I'll see you guys later.